Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you recall a while back during a live stream, I talked about how I was going to conduct an experiment and see if there was any validity to the idea that if an aquarium has no decor to protect or claim as territory, that there would be less aggression. So I was, what I did is I cleaned all the decor out of a 55 gallon tank and I put my most aggressive African cichlids in that tank. I was gonna wait until the, uh, the foggy eye that the phoenix that you see here, I was gonna wait for his uh, right eye to clear up a little bit and I had him in a five gallon where he was getting a lot of water changes and a little bit of salt and uh, just kind of chilling out in there, hoping that eye would clear up. But as it turns out, I needed that five gallon in a hurry because the big spot in the 210 gallon, it looks like somebody beat him up. Uh, he went very, very dark in color. If you see his side, you can see where he took a few shots on the side and he was swimming very erratically. And uh, I could just tell he, he needed to get out of there right away. So I needed that five gallon. The good news is he is doing better in the five gallon eating and seems to be swimming better already so he is recovering to some degree if you've ever tried to catch African cichlids in a big tank you know it's very very difficult so I had to take all the decor out of the of the 210 in order to be able to to catch the fish that I wanted to transfer over to the 55 gallon so I did that and uh, I put back less decor. I thinned out the tank, and you'll see how that looks later. The 55 was the, uh, the home exclusively of this dragon blood. So the entire tank was really his territory. And you can see he's, he's quite a specimen. So the second I put other fish in, he immediately started the attack and more or less was just sending the message that this tank is mine not yours, you don't belong here, I belong here. And uh, just continually had his fins spread out and was going into attack mode with all the fish. He uh, singled out and was really going after the Eureka Red. And uh, I'm, I'm positive that, that if I had just let this go on for more than just a few hours, during which I, I sat there and observed it pretty closely. If I had just let it continue, I would have had a dead Eureka Red because he was really out to eliminate that fish. And I think as soon as he was done with that fish, he would have then gone in on the others, even though he was a little bit reluctant to approach the living stone eye, probably because it's as big or bigger than he is. But he did uh, deliver quite a beating to the Eureka Red, you can see here. And I, I reached a point where I just said, okay, enough's enough. This is not one of those, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assert my dominance and then back off. This is uh, a I'm going to kill you uh, type of situation. So I needed to take uh, some action. The experiment was taking a turn in, uh, in, in the wrong direction. And so I had to move quickly. The phoenix was hiding behind the heater and the living stone was underneath the filter. Now, some of you might argue that those, those are areas that probably could be called areas that could be claimed. You know, I, I tried to make it a decor-free tank, but perhaps the heater, perhaps that filter, perhaps even the wave maker or the output from the hang-on-back filter are things that a fish could claim. Uh, so... Is this experiment 100% science? Uh, no, no, it's just taking a look to see in a very, very lightly decorated or hardly at all decorated aquarium if aggression would be less. Normally with African cichlids, there is going to be some initial chases when new fish are added, but once dominance is established, those chases usually, usually settle down. That did not seem to be the case with the dragon blood. The dragon blood continued to pursue fish. You can see him here going after the uh, living stone eye and uh, really out to hurt the other fish. So I obviously have a, uh, a fish on my hands 
that definitely has some issues. And so I decided that there was really no, no other alternative. I was going to have to uh, abandon the experiment altogether, the undecorated tank and aggression experiment, or risk having fish just simply torn to shreds in front of me. But before actually abandoning it, I decided to go ahead and uh, isolate the dragon blood. Because you can see him here really, really kind of putting himself in position for an, for an open mouth attack here. When a fish hits another fish on the side, very often there can be some swim bladder damage and that's almost, almost impossible to recover from. So you can see here, he is just out of his mind. So it's a shame because he is a beautiful fish and I believe I really don't have much of a choice at this point except to eliminate him from my collection of fish. And so I'll take him to the local fish store and I'll tell him, you know, I'll tell him, look, this, this fish is a handful. He's beautiful. And if somebody wants to give him a tank all to his own, or perhaps put him with some fish that are much larger and aggressive, then perhaps uh, there's a chance that he might be able to, uh, to coexist. But right now you can see he is not a fish that you want to have in a uh, in a tank where there's going to be some where there's going to be tank mates that are similar in size. He'll just simply go after them relentlessly. The reason I moved him over initially was because he was attacking the new fish that I had added to the 210. So I had to net him. There he is, captured in a net, not looking too happy. And immediately when I took him out of the equation, all of the fish seemed to calm down. And of the three, I would say the Phoenix is probably the most assertive, but it's not the kind of assertiveness that, you were, that I was seeing with the dragon blood, like an out to kill type of assertiveness. That's not what, it, what I'm seeing. The Eureka Red is just hiding and trying to appear invisible and I can't blame him. He really took the brunt of the uh, Dragon Blood's attacks. So at this point, he's really into just, you know, ignore me and let me, let me heal, please. But after the Dragon Blood was removed, it seemed like everybody, everybody was willing to swim around a bit and, uh, you know, take put, you know, t take a look around and explore the aquarium. Where prior to that, everybody was in complete panic. Fortunately, I had a uh, Zeiss breeder box. I didn't want to have to keep this fish in this net. That'd be very cruel. But I have a a, a Zeiss breeder box that I picked up from the aquarium co-op. And so I installed the breeder box and I put the uh, dragon blood in there. And you can see it has uh, two screens for, for water circulation. It's not, the, it's not the, the biggest or roomiest space you could put them in, but a lot better than, than just being s caught in a net. But slowly with the dragon blood removed, I was seeing uh, more and more activity the living stone I didn't really seem inter interested in going after or attacking anybody the, um, the Phoenix a little bit of a nut job as well but not not the kind of aggression that you that you have in in fish like the dragon blood not that crazy I'm gonna keep going until I kill you now the question is, what do I do with these fish? I'm thinking the, uh, based on what I'm seeing here, without the crazy X factor of the, of the insane jerk fish that will never change, it looks like in the undecorated tank, they seem to be okay. And the next morning, the fish were actually still in pretty good shape 
swimming around and uh, nobody looked any worse than they did the, the day before. So there might be something to this having a tank undecorated uh, without any areas to claim. At the same time, there is this X factor that if you have a fish that is a complete nut job, like that dragon blood, a fish that really considers everything around them to be their territory, then um, then it's not going to work. Even even an undecorated tank, it's not going to make a difference. It's like folks that have you know dovi or you know some of these larger, more aggressive fish. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's in the tank. They're going to seek out tank mates and kill them. You know, that's that's just how they roll, and that's unfortunately looking like the way the dragon blood is wired at this point. You can see the uh, Eureka Red. Those are bubbles on his, on his body. He doesn't have ick, but he does have some marks where he took some shots. The good news is the following morning he was looking a lot better. Interestingly enough, when I removed the most aggressive, the sort of apex alpha aggressive fish out of the 210, Everybody seems to be getting along fine. Nobody has started to assert themselves as the new tank boss or started chasing anyone around. And as I'm recording this, I'm, I'm looking at the tank and I'm just seeing fish that normally would have been in the corners or, you know, like that Johnson Eye and, and that, that uh, Bicolor 500. They're swimming around. They're, um, you know, they're, they're all over the entire tank. So I'm thinking... I mean, I'm not really sure if I want to put any of those hyper-aggressive fish back into the 210 only because the 210 just seems so much calmer now. So the question is, um, you know, is a tank with no decoration going to be less aggressive? I would say that um, based on what I observed, and again, this is a very limited and certainly not a highly controlled legitimate you know 100 percent legitimate scientific experiment especially when you consider that things like the heater the uh, expert matic filter the wave maker could be called uh, markers uh, you know, things that could be claimed i guess but i would say in looking at how the three of these fish are behaving i would say that um yeah you know no decor seems to be kind of chilled them out a little bit and um once I removed the um, the nut job so you have that X factor that is not going to change whether you're 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 heavily stocked lightly stocked a lot of decor no decor the X factor is that if you have a fish that's a bit twisted like this dragon blood it's not gonna matter there you're still gonna have a lot of, of uh, fin damage uh, you're gonna have fish that are going to be suffering and living under severe stress and probably uh, with a very high likelihood of either getting killed or, um, or becoming ill from the stress. But if you see here, and this was taken the following morning, things seem to be relatively calm. And when I see the living stone, when he's colored down, when he's showing his pattern like that, He's actually a pretty cool fish. For some reason, when I put him in the 210 and he gets around his rock quarry, he goes completely blue. He goes into sort of breeding dress and starts chasing fish away from the rocks. But he might go back in the 210 because he actually never really damaged anybody badly. The Phoenix, a little crazy. He can be a little crazy. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the Eureka Red. I'm gonna let him heal up, that's for sure. The uh, dragon blood is going to go somewhere else. I'm going to rehome him. And the Eureka Red, he just needs to kind of just recover from the whole ordeal. And then maybe I'll put him back in the 210 or just let him live alone for a little while. Meanwhile, things in the, in the 210 continue. You can see how I thinned it out. I took out some plants, took out that very large cave at the left side there, rearranged some of the rocks on the right. But these fish are, are, are getting along great now. I, I don't see any 
any crazy, I'm going to hurt you type of chases going on. I'm just seeing a tank full of, uh, you know, full of African cichlids kind of bumbling around. So I get them all to go to one place, make them think I'm going to feed them. So I don't know, I might just leave this combination of fish for now. I mean, they're doing great. An African, you know, cichlid tank without chases and violence is a very rare thing. So I might have achieved that by removing the most aggressive, the ones that were keeping everybody on edge. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to join me on Saturdays for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. We'll certainly talk about this and a lot of other things related to fish keeping. I appreciate you tuning in and uh, consider becoming a Patreon. That kind of support is greatly appreciated. And uh, that's it for me. Thank you, my friends. And uh, I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.